when you were in um, in Kharkiv and uh, why you decide to go to Lviv and what next? Uh, frankly speaking, I was going to stay in Kharkiv till the end, till the victory, but uh, my house, I can say that in the end of uh, bombings and uh, bombings were like every day, every minute and I could not eat. I could not uh, go somewhere. Mm. Sorry, I'm a little bit worried about that. And I spent 11 days and nights in my bathroom. Uh, it was cold, it was maybe in my flat plus 13 degrees. And I started to feel sick, I started to feel that I lost my weight. And uh, yeah, but till the end I was trying to stay because it's my city and I have to be there. I didn't see any opportunity and any hope that I will have the like uh, I, will, <laughs> I will have the opportunity to go. Also my mom she stays in uh, Kupiansk it's now. Near? Yes, it's in 120 it's kilometers near. and it's now n like uh, uh, de facto it's not Ukrainian and I was I was worried about that because I wanted to come to my mom to take her away, but uh, it was impossible because uh, the road from Kharkiv to Kupiansk is like full of dead people, uh, full of attacked cars, and uh, it was impossible to go because Russian soldiers were attacking every car with kids, with civil people. And uh, this, like, row. also my brother, he, now he's uh, in Lviv Oblast too, he lives uh, in this territory and now he doesn't have a house anymore and his family too. Uh, and uh, he told me, like, weird things that there are nothing, no nothing from this way. So, and where I live, Russians bombed school. Russians bombed Vushivanka factory, Russians bombed college, and uh, my last morning in Kharkiv it was I woke up at, at 4 a.m. because of the strongest bombings. It was unbelievable noise, and I realized that maybe it's my last like last minutes of my life, and uh, I was ready that maybe I will die now, and. Uh, uh, but, you know, like, I was waiting when I will have the opportunity to go to the kitchen to check, like, my apartment. Uh, uh, yes, and when I came outside, I realized that my apartment is okay, but all my uh, windows are open because of the ex explosion wave. There was no glass? No, it was, fortunately... <laughs> Yes, it was, uh, it, was open, yeah. it was opened because of this wave and uh, like I asked uh, in Telegram are the people so what's happened and they said that for example it's my house and here is like a student's hostel and Russians bombed this hostel totally like you know it was in, Someone was in the I, I, I still don't know really because it's impossible also to check something. And uh, at that um, second I realized, no, I have to run because uh, if I will stay here, I will die and uh, I will not help to my country this way. So I took just some documents, uh, some like things that are important for me, like memory of my father, my family, and I started to check in the car. And uh, fortunately, uh, one man from the from our like house, uh, he said that uh, he can take someone to the train station. And uh, in three hours, uh, I was on the train station, and I ran to the uh, first train. And nobody was knowing where it goes. Just I asked everyone, so where we go? And they said it doesn't matter where we go. And uh, then in some like hours, we know that it's like it's coming to Ternopil. Uh, fortunately, it was, you know, like n not too much people were inside, and uh, it was uh, first minutes, uh, first hours when I was feeling that um, I can stay alive. And uh, yes, the next uh, morning I came to Ternopil, then to Lviv, and then to my uh, to my relatives' house in Chervanahrat, it's in 70 kilometers from Lviv, so now I live there. Sorry for the question, I there. 
Uh, do you mean uh, in Kharkiv? Yeah, from your family. Uh, my mom stay. I don't have like uh, grandparents, uh, father. I have only mother, and she stays in Kupiansk. Uh, this city now is occupied by Russians, and um, yeah, I worry about her every day because uh, uh, we we know a lot of sorry bloody stories uh, from this city, and uh, I still don't know how it will be possible. For for she to live there because she says for now it's okay with food, with water, but she is not sure what it will be the next week. Lviv is not safe place also. It's quite safe here, but today morning there were uh, rockets uh, near the airport and generally people who live here also don't know what tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. Uh, yes, but you know, if it's maybe stupid if I will say that, but if to compare what I felt in Kharkiv, for me it's like, you know, okay. And when we hear sirens with my brother, we just, uh, okay, it's sirens, okay, okay, maybe we have to sleep, okay, it's, for, for us it's, we, <laughs> we pass this period. When you think about future, what do you think generally? Uh, I'm sure that I will be back to my uh, house. Uh, also, I still have a job, I'm a government worker. And uh, I, I'm sure that I have too much job. And uh, I'm waiting this time when I come to my job uh, to, to see our colleagues and we will, we will continue to work, we will continue to create a new Kharkiv, a new Ukraine. I'm, I'm full of dreams and I will see my mother. I'm just I'm just waiting for that. Last question. Uh, you are going generally to stay in uh, Ukraine, whatever happened? Uh, I have a lot of friends from different countries and they invited me. So, of course, uh, I know that I can come to them, but they try to make me sure that I have to come. But no, I'm here and they know that to go to Europe, for example, it's not my priority. So I'm trying to stay here as long as I can. But Frankly, I think I will, I will not go. I will be here. I hope you're gonna stay here, not because the world don't want to welcome you, but I hope you're gonna stay here because the war ends. Yeah, we hope too, and uh, I hope to uh, to see my friends from different countries, uh, like uh, to come to them uh, as uh, you know, as a guest, but not as a refugee. I'm sure it's, it will be. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank and uh, good luck. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much Thank too. You. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.